हेलो 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 वेल मैंने लास्ट टाइम टैग्स नहीं डाले थे ना अब टैग डालते हैं बाकी चीज़ों का यू आई यू एक्स ओके सो आज का अपने को ये करना है कल हमने किया था ये वाला तो आज ये वाली देखेंगे ओके लेट्स सी It doesn't matter what softwares you know today. Okay, sound वगैरह सब सही है. Because with time, every technical skill gets outdated. What truly stays with you are the core principles, your mindset, and the way you think about your subject. Welcome to the foundations for UX design, a 15 episode series that will take you through all the important lessons and realizations I've had so far as a self-taught UX designer. My name is Ansh Mehra and I am a product designer and storyteller at zaddle.com which is a virtual events hosting platform. In this session we will be learning some of the most common mistakes students make when they begin their career as a UX designer. I hope you've seen all videos from the series preceding this episode. With that being said, I hope you enjoy this session. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Right so today's session is about thinking smarter and faster as a UX designer. I think very few people actually talk about this thing and the reality is that all good designers that I know people who are senior to me are actually doing these things maybe subconscious kal ek aur cheez tha jo ki humne dekha nahi tha i mean note nahi kiya tha jo hum ye wala dekh rahe the iske ek aur last responsive layer tha उस कौन सा प्लग इन था वो रिस्पॉन्सिव प्लग इन या कंटिन्यू लेट्स कंटिन्यू यप इट डजंट मैटर व्हाट सॉफ्टवेयर्स यू नो टुडे बिकॉज़ ऑल राइट सो टुडे सेशन इज अबाउट थिंकिंग स्मार्टर एंड फास्टर एज अ यूएक्स डिजाइनर आई थिंक वेरी फ्यू पीपल एक्चुअली टॉक अबाउट दिस थिंग and the reality is that all good designers that i know people who are senior to me are actually doing these things maybe subconsciously maybe unconsciously but they're doing it and i have been observing a bunch of people i've been observing a series of interviews and i've realized that it's not just about what you do it's also about how much effort it takes for you to deliver certain outputs and how much energy do you have throughout the day and if you really want to make sure that your time and energy are calibrated you have to think smarter and you have to think faster and it's not just for ux design i think this is applicable to every other field but since i am a student of ux i would teach this session from that lens so the entire presentation is made on figma and uh, i'm going to assume that you have seen my first two videos the first video was about uh, my journey so far my story so far and the second video was just a brief introduction to figma and uh, I would recommend you guys to watch that video after this session if this is the first time you're coming to my channel. Second assumption, I am pretty sure you must have completed the Figma playlist by now. If you haven't, make sure that you complete that playlist. And uh, in the end, I hope that you're taking care of your mind and your body. See productivity and success and being a fabulous UX designer can come whenever they want to, but I hope that you are taking care of yourself first, which is supremely important. All right. I think before we even understand what we need to do we have to make sure that in life whatever that we are experiencing we are able to understand and assimilate patterns properly now what do i mean by that big words fancy words what i mean is that whenever we experience okay next second ma hmm, we are done let's continue we in something we put a tag on that experience it could be a positive tag it could be a negative tag mostly when things are positive we don't ask questions because we're pretty happy with how we are flowing with the universe 
when things go against us, we are often confused. Some people stay confused, but there are some people who ask questions as to how did this thing happen. But even in those cases, even if you are aware enough to ask questions, you might be asking the wrong questions. Why would we do that? Because we do not know what we do not know. There is a huge subject of topics that might be there in the world. It might be there on the internet, but it wouldn't come to you until unless you specifically and explicitly search for it. Now, nobody will make an effort to correct you because everyone else is busy in their own lives. But because we are born in an age where we have the internet, where we have YouTube, where we have so many resources at our disposal, it is our responsibility to make sure that we leverage the internet. and we truly truly make the most of the time that we have hello, when hello. we look at an object hello hello so we are learning ui ux and just started theek hai so kuch dikkat nahi hai you can continue object when we look at a situation it's very easy to get drawn into the details it's very easy to let emotions take the best of us and that usually happens when we are looking things from a microscopic level and i am guilty of it as well but now that i have spent a little amount of time thinking about myself thinking how i think i've become better at recovering from that state so i am not saying that i am perfect but the recovery time from that low state to a high energy state has reduced and that is why i want to share these insights and mostly it's about looking at the bigger picture see not trying to be very philosophical not trying to be very spiritual but in a bigger scheme of things if you really really zoom out almost everything would seem very normal to you nothing would panic you because you know that there's a huge scheme of things going on now it's very important that when we talk about improvement when we talk about optimization we have to channelize our energy where we get the maximum output The problem is that people solve the wrong problems. They confuse their symptoms with the underlying cause. So they would get a bunch of problems and they would try to solve them from a microscopic level but not zoom out and see themselves from a third person's view. Because if you solve these big level problems, everything that come below that umbrella would automatically get solved. So for example, when you get a situation when you get a problem when you get a design problem you would try to focus on that one specific problem but if you are able to identify the mindset behind solving problems if you identify the approach behind searching for the right solutions you know using the right techniques and if you fine tune your process if you build a system around your process you basically solve almost every single problem that will come in the future but if you solve a specific problem that solution is basically an expired solution because it wouldn't work for your next problem so a few examples of how we end up asking the wrong questions i get a lot of people who say how do i learn ux design that's such a vague question how do you respond to that what you should ask is things that are actionable when you ask someone a question you have to help them answer that question So you have to be specific and you should expect actionable outcomes. So instead of saying how do I learn UX, you should say can you recommend three most valuable resources because now you have narrowed it down. You have narrowed the question down. Instead of asking how do I earn more, understand that earning is a result of positioning. It's a result of perception. So you have to learn how to pitch a higher price because most probably you are doing good work. If you're smart enough, if you've been working hard, you know that you deserve more so it's not just how do i earn more you have to dig deep go to the internet and recognize around you that who are the people who are making the most money and you realize that it's people who are positioned well who are working hard and who are able to communicate their value properly so you have to learn how do i pitch a higher price then is it too late for me to begin this mindset is from a very scarce place right when you say is it too late for me you usually think that you're running out of time but in reality none of us will ever run out of time i mean we have enough time in our lives we should be grateful for that we are healthy enough to pursue the things that we want in life but if you're healthy you have enough time so the question you need to ask is how do i manage my time how do i manage my energy how do i prioritize my list then some say how do i stand apart dude that so but hey you know what happened really is what he is talking about right now is 
how people ask wrong questions and approach the problems in a wrong way so it's the most important thing even which i face like the problem this one most of the people not able to manage their time and not able to prioritize their things which cause a bigger loss so how we can manage this it's very important and uh, not only time we should also manage our energy no one talks about the energy management everyone talks only about the time management thing so it's a important thing to even manage our time as well as to manage the energy because using the energy in the wrong way or on a wrong thing might end up wasting time as well that's too vague it's too vague please dig deeper and ask deeper questions ask about how do i build a brand how do i get that usp how do i make myself stand out in a way that i get more attention online as compared to my competitors now i have been reading this book called the almanac of naval ravikant and i think most of you must have uh, checked out his podcast i would recommend every single person to really really listen to the naval podcast if you don't have enough time naval ravikant has compiled all his how to get rich episodes in this 3 hour podcast episode i would recommend you to listen that and i would recommend you to listen the strangest secret by earl nightingale as well basically the point is that you can have everything you want in this life but not all at once what people believe is they'll have a bunch of 10 15 goals and they'll be like yeah i want to do everything that i have in my mind but the problem is when you take that approach you dissipate all your energy so a lot of people see that oh see as i told you like you can't do everything at once you can't be boating or like channelizing two boats at a time so this is what i mean that's why i stopped the video editing part and continued what i really want in my life like ux design so why i got distracted because you guys came apart and <laughs> what you were requesting a lot that shows video editing shows this shows that so yeah everything is related everything is like is needed as well but i should prioritize what i really want to do like i shouldn't go with the thing you guys want because ultimately it's important that what i am doing at the end so that's why i continued my ux learning ag- again and now i'm i'm working with the plan not like the uh achievable or like believable goals just like he said it's not like that i build a plan and i'm going according to that i'm going to stream every day i'm going to learn everything and each day i'm going to learn something so through this process let's continue Oh you know you should set achievable goals and you should you know achieve believable goals I don't believe in that I think we should build really really big goals have immense immense big visions because usually because of our own subconscious programming and our childhood and our upbringing we usually think in a limited capacity but the world is filled with abundance there's so much happening in this world you can go on the internet and realize this so it's not just you should set achievable goals you should build a plan you should build a system to get what you want and make a priority of things that you want to do in life so if you want to be a really really good ux designer in a really really good company you can't just directly jump to that level if you want a fit body if you want to work on your portfolio if you want to work on a website if you want to work on your freelancing skills you can have everything you want but you have to set an order you have to prioritize each and everything and be happy with whatever order that you set it's not like Oh maybe I had this order a month ago and now I suddenly changed my mind don't do that invest a lot of time building that plan building that system but once you've built it stick to it for at least 10 months i think 10 months is a good amount of time to stick to a plan and just understand that oh am i getting the correct results i have to drink some water it's difficult to talk so much and we've just started cool now the question is fine you're giving so much gyan but why should we listen to you i mean who am i i mean if you watch my first video you would know a little bit about my context i wouldn't say that i'm the best product designer in the world i wouldn't say i'm the most successful person in this world but i can tell you that i have come far far ahead from where i started in a relatively shorter amount of time and i'm very happy with my growth 
I don't put too much pressure on myself. I wouldn't say that I have an easy life. I think all of us have our own chips on our shoulders. We all have our own fair share of struggles, our own traumas. But I am very happy with the information that I've accumulated in the past two to three years. I'm very happy with the speed at which I'm recovering from things. And because I'm on this journey, I felt that I would document this entire journey and put it out there for anyone who needs it. And that is the power of the internet, right? I might leave YouTube, I might leave Instagram, but the knowledge that I have, the documentation that I have would be available to you. So the only reason you should listen to me is because I am not lying. I'm not faking it. I'm putting a real picture in front of you. I'm not the best designer. I'm not the best at everything I do, but I have accelerated my progress as compared to other people. Of course, there are people who have learned so much more than I have in the past one year and they have grown so much more. You should learn from them as well. I'm not saying learn from me and don't learn from them. Learn from every single person that you meet. But I just want to give you a brief overview as to what are the things that have really helped me. Time and energy are actually one of the most valuable things that you have. But if we often have this cognitive bias that things that we pay for are expensive and are valuable, but things that we get for free are not very valuable. Whereas in reality, the inverse is true. Most things that we receive for free uh, are actually the most valuable things and you cannot replace them. So most of your time and most of your emotions and most of your energy should be spent on important thinking. And it's very, very easy to get tempted and solve all these nonsense problems that the world will throw at you because the world wants to consume your time. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, everyone else has only one objective, to consume your time, to consume your energy for their advantage. Only your friends, your parents, and some of your colleagues are going to think about you. But apart from that, most people would want ownership over your time. They would want ownership over your energy. And if you're not conscious about these things, you would end up wasting and spending a lot of time and energy into things that don't matter in the longer run. And you just have to make sure that you don't think in terms of tangible expenditure. I see a lot of people who just think about the money that they've spent, but they don't think about the time. They don't think about the energy. They don't think about the emotions. For example, and even Navar Ravikant talks about this example that let's just say, you don't like cooking, right? But you're trying to cook horrible food for yourself because you want to save money. So you're saving some amount of money every month. But the time that you're spending, the emotions that you're spending, the thoughts that you're spending on that act, you're actually losing more, but it's not visible to you because you're only thinking in terms of money. So broaden your perception of expenditure. We're not just spending money, we're also spending time, energy, emotion, all kinds of things at all times. And the fun part is that there are some cases where you can give a chunk of money and get massive, massive ROI in all these intangible returns. Now, what do I mean by intangible returns? Let's just say you bought a really expensive laptop for two lakh rupees, really expensive. And you don't see any monetary ROI at the outset. But with time, in a span of two to three years, you end up saving a lot of hours. With that laptop, you end up installing new softwares. You upscale yourself and you eventually earn more. So that is an intangible return. It's not specifically in terms of monetary returns. A lot of people buy clothes and some people criticize other people who buy expensive clothes. I don't do that anymore. I used to be that guy who used to make fun of people who used to buy really expensive clothes, but now I get it. The way you dress, the way you look builds your perception and your perception influences your perceived value and your perceived value would eventually influence the kind of work that you do, the kind of network that you build. So when you buy a really expensive suit, most people would think, why should I waste so much of money? Why should I waste so much money? But they don't realize is that a lot of people are able to capitalize on that investment. And because of that suit, because of their fitness, because of their body language, they get access to doors that are usually close to other people who don't get these concepts. And a very, very popular cognitive bias that we have, which is very, very surprising, is that most youngsters, at least people from my age, we don't use the internet. We use the internet for nonsense problems, but we don't use the internet for 
things that are actually bothering us could be anything could be in your personal life could be your back pain could be your skin routine could be your i don't know could be your fashion sense could be your communication your pronunciation so many things are there but people don't google their problems they wait they sit and they wait for some random mentor or some person to come and fix them no one is coming you have to use the internet so i'm done with the introduction let's talk about some early level mistakes you must avoid so that you can learn from my experience and you can save time and quickly get better at what you're doing and let's work together that is my aim that is why i teach people because i want to build a society where we have exciting people doing exciting things mistake number 1 is that i always used to perceive failure in the wrong way and now these points are all wait a second now huh? okay today is day 2 i guess let's rename this as day because we can't do this every day okay we are done open new tab and though these are not allowed to like stream live but still this was day 1 day 1 done do i get any copyright or what Not sure. Okay, post pe. Namaste, my name is Sami. <laughs> Wait a second, now let me check. Did we get any copyright restrictions? Not sure. Third song. continue mute close done uh any more copyrights not at all mm -hmm. so we are done also i going to hide these two as well because two videos i guess more actions visibility make unlisted update okay updating video i updated let's continue i've become better at recovering from that state so i am not saying that i am perfect but the recovery time from that low state to a high energy state has reduced and mistake number 1 is that i always used to perceive failure in the wrong way and now these points are almost about the correction part so the numbers are not about mistakes i'm telling you what to do now so you have to redefine the word failure and of course all of us have come from different backgrounds from different uh, circles and different networks and different priorities but it's very important to understand that failure has very negative connotations to it and after a very long time i've realized how to perceive failure how to perceive mistakes if you change your perception your entire experience of your life will change and if your experience of the life improves then you will improve your feelings about yourself will improve and if you feel good about yourself it would show in your work and that is my intent with all these lessons if you feel good about yourself it would show in your work and people want to work with people who are feeling good so a very very quick example i have a junior and in fact a bunch of my friends and i have also committed this mistake and i'll give you i'll tell you a story on this so this guy he managed to get a really good client for 15000 bucks a graphics designing ka contract and he worked super hard he worked the entire month and after he delivered that guy stopped responding that guy 
didn't pay him for two three months, and this friend of mine was super sad and he called me. He's like, "What do I do now?" In most cases, when you're young and you're dealing with someone who's fifteen years older to you in a different city, not in your physical proximity, you met him on the internet. There's very little that you can do. Let's be real about it. But I told him that this is a mistake that you've made, and it's to make sure that you perceive this as a fee and not a fine. You didn't lose fifteen thousand bucks. You just paid this universe tuition fees of fifteen thousand bucks to learn this lesson. That always have strong contracts. Always judge the opposite person before you enter a deal with them. Always, you know, notice those red flags when you're communicating. When you're communicating about pricing. When you're communicating about payment deals. When you're communicating about advance. When to send them the raw files. When to send them the final assets. So this is not a fine. People consider failure as a fine. It's not a fine. It's the tuition fees that you give. But the problem is that people don't learn from their mistakes. So if you're not able to break down your mistakes, you will keep paying that tuition fee to the universe and to the society, and the society will keep charging you maximum of tuition fees. But if you pass the exam, if you learn from your mistakes, then you will not pay the fee. Another thing is that whenever you try something, whenever you ask for something, it's very very common to get rejection. See, we are not in a TV series where. You get a problem for thirty minutes, and at the end of forty-five minutes, everything would get sorted for you. It's not, it's not very practical. You will face rejection, but how do you feel after rejection? Is what is truly important. Now, all of us have used applications for calling cabs, for calling food, and after every transaction, we give that app a feedback, maybe four stars, maybe five stars. The application that gets this feedback is very objective. It uses data to understand how I'm performing. you have to apply the same principle to your life as well the entire universe is giving you feedback on a daily basis remove the word rejection and make everything as objective data for optimization there's a very very interesting podcast it's called insights and perspectives on spotify you should definitely listen to that they also talk about something similar but what i would recommend you guys is to understand that rejection is basically feedback and i'm not just talking about your career i'm talking about your body your body is giving you feedback on a daily basis it's telling you how it feels on the basis of how you're treating it your mind and your thoughts and your sleep patterns they are a feedback your salary is a feedback of how much you worked on yourself you of course feedback is there in the products perspective as well but i want you to get outside your domain and use the principles that are currently restricted in ux design and extrapolate those principles in your life and the principles that you use to run in your own life try to inculcate those in your ux design process so the lines get blurry at one point you manage yourself as if you're managing a really successful product and at one point you are managing your product as if it's your life you're truly truly emotionally connected with that project it's that important to you one second i get dehydrated very quickly all right and in the end you have to stay in touch with reality it is a very difficult thing to do i also fail from time to time but it's supremely important that you stick to reality and what do i mean by that most people spend a lot of time in their own thoughts in their own assumptions and they forget that these are not facts these are assumptions and it's very difficult because when you're sitting alone sitting in your own thoughts it's very difficult to truly understand that oh is this an assumption are these my emotions or is this reality and i would recommend everyone to read principles by ray dalio and if you want to learn about this point about staying in touch with reality definitely read part 2 life principles from page 131 onwards the second step would be upgrading your vocabulary yes i'm telling you there's there's so much and so much power in communication that once you understand the value of communicating properly and clearly and comprehensively there is no turning back words have immense power in fact that is the reason why humanity has come so far because we were able to communicate really subtle things other animals they don't have this blessing they don't have language and if you've read sapiens you would know this that language 
has been one of the most 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 important factors to our growth but you have to inculcate this in your professional life as well because when you have that vocabulary built in with you you're able to save a lot of time because you have words for every subtle thing you have words for every specific thing that you expect from your stakeholders do you have specific words and a specific shared vocabulary which brings everyone on the same page now there's a very very interesting study on how your words and how your vocabulary can influence your experience of reality which is really fascinating and i would recommend everyone to firstly watch a video by the future and it's called the difference so i have watched this video uh, not these but yeah i have watched this one between design and art how to find your words it is a brilliant video it is slightly long take your time consume content you know slowly but assimilate truly make it a part of you then you should recommend uh, i'm sorry i recommend you to read this article called no one could see the color blue until modern times it's there on business insider by kevin loria and i will put all these links in the description don't worry and after this entire thing you should definitely start reading material foundation and material guidelines these are the two main sections that you should definitely read they are by google on material designs website and i will share all these links don't worry about it but let me give you an example let's just say there's a word called scroll spy now most of you would have experienced scroll spy in your day to day life it's basically you have a top nav bar if you click on that one single tab it would quickly hop to that section of the web page now all of you have seen this all of you understand this but you don't know the right word for it that is called scroll spy so what happens is you would be talking to your designer or your developers and you'd be like hey can we have that navigation where you'd click on that tag and it would automatically jump to that specific section wait wait i think i saw this on that website can you give me 2 minutes let me open 2 3 tabs and figure it out what a waste of your time instead just say hey let's just add a scroll spy if that guy doesn't know what is scroll spy tell him to google it but at least you replace such a long contextual conversation in just four five words because you had the proper vocabulary just a few examples breadcrumbs right you see these all at all times they are they they are usually used for navigating and there's a very interesting story as to why do we call these things as breadcrumbs because this entire phrase this entire word came from hansel and gretel because hansel would take a slice of bread and leave a trail of bread crumbs to know how to get back to their home safely because that is how they would track where they are going and that is the purpose of bread crumbs in your user interface as well you know where you are and you know how to go back then you have jumbotron a really really big box that would call attention to a specific content and of course the definition is really subjective but the screenshots that i've attached right now are from zuddle.com so uh, we have a few features on zuddle.com so i've just taken some examples but we're about to redesign zuddle.com it's going to be so so cool i can't wait to show you we 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 started our work on it it's going to be super cool all right so the third thing is learning visual design and there are so many tutorials online you wouldn't believe the kind of value youtube has but i would recommend everyone to watch this playlist on youtube and it's called refactoring ui playlist i've also bought their book it is a brilliant investment absolutely phenomenal book i absolutely love it and it would teach you a lot about visual design and i'll tell you why because no matter what people say everyone judges a book by its cover that is primarily why we often are biased towards things that look attractive so you have to make sure that rather than having this cognitive bias work against you you have to use this cognitive bias for you you have to put it in your work and there are so many figma plugins to make your life easy and we will discuss all of these things in detail right now in these proceeding in these beginning sessions i just want to introduce some mental models some ways that you can think but uh, you have to understand that visual design plays a huge huge role please allocate a chunk of your day just just fine tuning visual design there are so many practices that you can cover there's the 100 day ui challenge where you would trace a specific ui uh there's a bunch of stuff right but there's one thing that truly helps me because at one point you would run out of time right like how many uis can you even replicate like it it just feels lame after a while so 
I'll tell you what I do at this point. Whatever that I'm consuming, whether it's a movie, whether I'm buying a product, whether I'm buying a book, I try to analyze what is so good about this thing? What is so good about this movie post? So what is so good about this gadget that I'm using? Why am I buying these things? What is grabbing my attention? That helps me to get insights from all kinds of fields. And when I get insights from all these kinds of fields, I have these dots in my consciousness, right? Some dots from filmmaking, some dots from spirituality, some dots from literature, some dots from entertainment, some dots from packaging. And then I sit and I document these thoughts and I'll tell you how I document them. You have to do the same because you've lived a very interesting life. No matter what you think about your life, your life has taught you a lot of things. You're just not aware of it. So you have to connect lines of these dots. And once you connect these dots, you'll make a web of knowledge. You make a web of consciousness. And when someone throws a problem at you, that problem would get trapped into that web. And as you learn more things, as you go outside your bubble and as you expand that web of consciousness, you would have a bigger net. And when you have a really big net, most problems, when someone throws a really complex problem, that problem somehow touches some part of your web and you're able to recognize the pattern and you're like, oh, this is how we solve it. So I would recommend you to switch from being a simple consumer to a producer. Think as a producer. Not just blindly consume your application. When you're using an application, understand where are my eyes going? What am I observing? Why am I observing? And it will help you a lot. So a very quick example. This is a very simple card. It's a, it's a profile card. And I've used this on Zuddle. Pretty basic stuff. And I've made a copy of this entire thing. So even during handoffs, when you have to show a bunch of contact items, you probably have to show how these contacts would look. Now, most people get lazy. They're like, ah, oh, you know, it makes sense, right? Like this is one contact card, I've duplicated it. And yeah, this is good to go, but it's not. And I've put in a lot of detail into the individual card design. You can see that there's a stroke on the upper left corner. It's a gradient stroke. I've put noise, I've put font hierarchy, everything. But this is, this is, this is the main step where people lose out. Now, how do I fix that? I'll tell you how to fix it and I'll tell you how to fix it quickly. Just a quick example. There's this plugin called Content Reel. And it simply allows you to have dummy data. And it's a phenomenal plugin. Let me show you how it works. And before I open Content Reel for you, I'd like to show you how I've structured this entire auto layout. All right, cool. So now it's working. So I'll tell you a trick that I use in my designs. I actually use auto layout even for full name and first name for my designation at and the company name, because even from the back end, this is how we get data. So in my layers panel, this is first name and this is last name. And what I would do is let's just say there are many tools. There's actually Faker as well. Faker is also a phenomenal tool. So I would select all the first names. and select first name and check what happened. It suddenly replaced the word Ansh, but then in some cases the character count got slightly, ex it exceeded the limit that I had. So if I click on this button right here, which makes it auto width, now it has responded well. Now for the surname, I think this one is also there. Cool. Let's select this one, this one, and this one. Let's make it auto width. Now let's select the second name and you'll realize the difference it makes with just a small nudge of just using proper data. In fact, it's a good way to test your data as well, because when you use your own data, you always write data that works with your design, but it's not necessary that when you get dynamic data from your backend, everything would work. So these tests actually allow you to check how well you've designed your thing and content reel actually allows you to have a huge bunch of like dummy data, right? I use so many of their presets and I actually build my own presets as well. So I'll take these profile pictures and maybe I'll click on avatars. And when I click that, it'll quickly replace. Yep, it's done. So in just a second, I've got a bunch of pictures 
there's another trick that I use and that is if I open this person does not exist. It's a fabulous website and it just allows you to have uh, pictures of different kinds of people who are not real. So I would save 50, 60 of these faces and I would quickly put them in a folder and use command shift K and simply batch select them. Right. So if I batch select them, I quickly click on these faces. I would have those people, but sometimes you need a slight portrait sort of a picture for that content reel works really well. So yes, you have a bunch of things on content reel. In fact, I have built my own presets on content reel. So sometimes as Zuddle, we need a bunch of Zuddlers names. So I have a preset inside content reel where we have our pictures, the team at Zuddle, our names, our designations, our titles. So it looks pretty cool. I think it's a fabulous way. So I'll, I'll tell you the difference. What difference did it make? This is what we usually have. So this is what people usually make. And this is what happens when you design it properly. Can you see the difference? It's a very subtle change, but it really, really matters. So I would recommend you to leverage plugins. And of course we will dig deep. I'm just giving you a quick example as to how these things would work. Coming to the fourth step, you have to identify what all has the universe taught you so far? Because everyone has their own unique story. Everyone has come from their own backgrounds and you somehow learn these things uh, that are very unique to you. And sometimes even your flaws become a blessing. And uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, Chani Chok to China. They have this scene where the main character, Akshay Kumar's character, is against a really, really powerful villain. And he's fighting and he realizes what is my special move. And even Bruce Lee has this quote. He's like, I'm not afraid of 10,000 moves that you've practiced once, but that one move that you've practiced 10,000 times. So when he's fighting, Akshay Kumar does this. And that guy used to make dough out of Atta in Chani Chow. So he was doing that unconsciously. He was training himself unconsciously. The world was training him unconsciously. But at that fight, at that point in life, all of that unconscious training helped him. A similar thing happened in Slumdog Millionaire. Life was giving him lessons and he never really, he never really understood why is life teaching me all these things. But after a while, you understand. Steve Jobs had a similar speech. He said that you can only connect the dots looking backwards. But we shouldn't waste so much of time that, oh, we understand at the age of 50 that, oh my God, these are the dots. No, start connecting the dots. Start identifying what you have. And I have a friend of mine, his name is Sumer. He has a really good company on, uh, so he gives direction on how you can pursue your career. So he's into counseling and all that. So he told me a very interesting story in Bangalore. There was this kid and he didn't have his right arm. And he was really, really shy about it. He was really embarrassed about the fact that he didn't have his right arm. One day he goes to the park and he sees a bunch of people practicing Kung Fu. And then he's like, I want to learn Kung Fu. And then he goes to this teacher and he's like, can you please teach me Kung Fu? And the teacher is like, um, yeah, fine, cool, come tomorrow. And this kid is like, fine, I'm ready to do whatever it takes. Just teach me Kung Fu, I want to win. And the teacher gives him a set of moves. Now we all know that cliched story that, yeah, the teacher is testing your patience by giving you really lame techniques. And he's like, oh yeah, you have to do this lame action for the next hundred days and I'm testing your patience or whatever. So this kid played along. This kid is like, fine, you're making me do a single move and I'll keep doing it. I don't have any choice. Eventually the kid goes to the tournament. He beats the level one person. He beats the level two person. He beats the level three person. And he eventually wins the tournament goes back to the teacher. It's like, dude, if there's so much power in this one special move, why is everyone not doing this? Everyone should just practice a single move. Why am I, do, I'm, why am I the only one who's doing this? So the teacher told him that the specific move that I've taught you will only help you because to do a reversal on that move, you need the opponent to have a right arm so that you can flip him over but you don't have a right arm. So when you do that move, which you've practiced 10,000 times, the opponent is like, dude, there's no right arm. How do I do a reversal to this? So that teacher essentially changed the entire flaw into a blessing. 
him not having a right arm actually became his strongest asset and you really really have to find this in your own life i know you must have had a really difficult life you have some flaws but you have to identify what are those flaws i've had a similar example in my life but i don't want to share that example right now i think i want to make it really big in life before i tell my stories <laughs> but you can learn from other people's stories right all right fifth invest in your own brand because they can copy your designs but they cannot copy your personality if people come to you because they want to work with you because they want to interact with you you have a better shot at scaling your businesses and your image and your perception plays a huge role because if you're good at things that you're naturally good at eventually people would believe that you're probably good at other things as well and that image really helps because people start trusting you and if you keep working and if you're ethical if you're intelligent and if you're able to navigate your energy you will actually scale really well in life so invest in your own brand that's supremely important it is the most important investment that you can do after you've invested in your mind and your body and your spiritual explorations and your work and everything have some amount of time investing in your brand we will cover this in the upcoming sessions because by spreading your word by spreading awareness about your name you increase your chances of getting lucky and the internet is best at that so let's quickly summarize and wow i made a spelling mistake in the middle of the session anyway so let us quickly summarize what we've learned so far begin asking the right questions discover the core problems behind your symptoms prioritize what you want to be in the next 10 to 12 months spend time and energy for important things redefine failure in how you perceive failure observe visual design around you don't just be a consumer actually break down things that you like identify your special talent if you have a flaw figure out how to capitalize on those flaws capitalize on every single thing that you have around you build that resourcefulness and nine start building your own brand and here is a little homework before i upload my next video please finish the getting started playlist on figma's youtube channel and if you're super super scared about these videos and if you forget figma has actually created a plugin it's called the figma tips plugin and you can open figma tutorial videos within your figma workspace you can google all these things you don't need me to spoon feed you everything and watch my last two videos on this channel if you get time definitely listen to everything that i've posted on take it easy because these things would give you a little bit of context because i'm i'm actually discussing a slightly complicated topic right it's not very direct it's not very to the point you can learn sigma you can learn all the technical stuff from many other people many other different people who are much much better than me but these are the things that i couldn't find when i started my journey and that was my intent and start documenting your goals and your intentions on notion i think notion has absolutely changed my life and one day i will actually tell you how i document my thoughts it has really helped me so yes this was anshmara you can follow me on instagram on at the rate anshmara.png on twitter i have at the rate anshmara with three a's at the end and on clubhouse is pretty much the same anshmara and yes i am happy that you made it through the end of the session i am super happy that you've been following me so far if you've been doing that so and we will meet pretty soon if you get time you should check out my other work as well on anshmara.com apart from all of these things my core job and my core core purpose right now is to work on zadul which is a virtual events hosting platform we're doing some amazing amazing stuff so you should check out zadul.com as well and apart from that i host a podcast called take it easy on spotify it's there on apple podcast geo savan gana everywhere where i talk about life design art realization all kinds of things make sure you subscribe to this channel make sure you click on the like button make sure you click on the bell icon so that you get to know when my next video comes in and if you had a good time make sure you comment right when you comment i i get to know that oh the content is working and people are at the session bye हेलो और भाई आइसक्रीम खाने चलेगा नहीं ब्रो आज भी काम है मिली कोई इंटर्नशिप नहीं यार अब आसपास सबकी जॉब लग रही है और यार मुझे मेरे मैसेज का भी रिप्लाई नहीं आता अच्छा तुमने लिंक्डइन ट्राई किया यार मैंने सब ट्राई किया ईमेल डीएम मैसेज सब
बट कोई रिप्लाई नहीं करता मुझे अब तो तुझे टाइम भी हो गया यार मतलब ट्राई करते हो छह महीने तो हो गए है अब मेरे हर दोस्त ने दो इंटर्नशिप कर ली है और मैंने एक भी नहीं करी है तूने एक इंटर्नशिप भी नहीं करी है नहीं <laughs> अबे यार अबे इंटर्नशिप तो करनी होती ना इस साल हाँ बट मुझे अब पता है क्या करना है क्या फ्रीलांस नहीं क्यों तो तो फ्रीलांस का काम भी मिला था एक ब्रो उसका बजट पांच हजार रूपए था एक महीने का काम है अब मैं स्टाइपेंट मांग रहा हूँ दिहाड़ी थोड़ी ना <laughs> तो अब मैं सोच रहा हूँ एक वेबसाइट बनाऊ अपनी खुद की वेबसाइट उससे क्या होगा यार मुझे लग रहा है मुझे ना अपने आप को थोड़ा प्रमोट करना पड़ेगा हाँ मतलब ब्रांडिंग भी जरूरी हो गई आजकल तो खुद सोच ना हर चीज में परसेप्शन का कितना बड़ा रोल है मैं कितनी भी मेहनत कर लू अगर मेरी परसेप्शन ठीक नहीं हुई तो कोई मेरे पे ध्यान ही नहीं देगा आ, तो तू अब क्या वेबसाइट बनाना सीखेगा हाँ मतलब सारांश है यश है वो थोड़ा हेल्प कर देंगे तो इसमें पैसे नहीं लगते क्या मतलब वेबसाइट बनाने में डोमेन लेना पड़ता है अपने नाम पर आठ सौ रूपए का मिल रहा है मेरे लिए ईयरली सब्सक्रिप्शन पर आठ सौ रूपए ज्यादा नहीं है हाँ बट अब अपना डोमेन खरीदना एक लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टमेंट है जैसे पहले लोग प्लॉट नहीं खरीदते थे अब हमारी जनरेशन के लिए अपने नाम का डॉट कॉम डोमेन एक वर्चुअल प्लॉट के बराबर है अब इससे पहले कोई और अंश मेरा आ जाए मैं अपना डोमेन खरीद के अब अपनी रीच बढ़ाऊंगा सही है भाई बहुत बढ़िया मुझे भी सिखा दिया यार हाँ <laughs> ठीक है चल आता हूँ मैं फिर बाद में अभी मैंने सुना डिनर में आज चना मसाले अरे वाह चल चल ठीक है मैं मिलता हूँ रात को ओके बाय बाय तो अच्छा था जो भी था एंड व्हाट आई लर्न टुडे लेट्स लेट्स टॉक नोशन नोशन ऑफ ओके नाइस ऑटोमेटिक लॉग इन हो गया लेट्स ऐड आइकन इमेज भी दैट्स नाइस ओके सो आई थिंक आई शुड हैव मेड दिस पेज ओके डेट इज द डेट टेस्टेड इज सिक्स अप्रैल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर एंड रिस्पॉन्स एवरीथिंग ओके रिस्पॉन्स इज प्लग इन now i can read it and today other page for 7 okay right. 7 april 2024 what i learned so these are the things today i learned i should ask right questions discover the core problems not the symptoms prioritize what i have to be in next 12 months spend time and energy for important things only not for the uh things which are not important for me then redefine the failure and how i perceive failures observe the visual design around me even this why this is so big just imagine <laughs> identify my special talents and start building my own brand so the last one yeah it's going on for the other things i have to think around it Okay, we are done. Today is day two. Let's make the tomorrow's thumbnail, the day three thumbnail. Okay. Ah.
I know people like might not like the things which I'm doing right now. But this has to be done anyhow. Even if people like it or not like it. Day three. And I have to choose something which is good. Should I use this? Ha ha ha. Look at the design. Uh, not good. Okay, so we are done for today. Let's come back again tomorrow at 9 p.m. I will try my best to come at 9 p.m. Okay, so that's it. Good night.